Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I wanted to walk you guys through Sun Kings as an unholy DK. Um, in my other videos I tend to focus a lot on DPS, how to use cooldowns to maximize your DPS. This fight unfortunately is the pinnacle of you essentially have to play this fight in a very selfish way in order to do good damage, but that doesn't ultimately contribute to you getting a kill. So I will mention some points where you can pop cooldowns to get more DPS, but on this fight in particular, I'd rather talk a little bit about how you approach this encounter as an unholy DK to ultimately get a kill. Um, so as far as my talent build goes, I use default talents as an unholy DK. Um, for legendaries, for this fight, you can either use Frenzy Monstrosity or Deadliest Coil. For this clip, um, I am using Deadliest Coil. And other than that, everything on this fight comes down to cooldown timings. Now, if you have a monk in your raid, I suggest that you ask them to spec into Ring of Peace, um, because that's going to help out with you being able to use a bomb limb without actually gripping the phoenixes onto the raid. So, besides that, everything is fairly standard. So I'll roll the footage here. A few things to mention. There are essentially two ways of playing this fight. You can either play it to do really good damage on the adds in the, um, in the phases where Kel'Thas is unattackable, or you can play it to get a little bit more Kel'Thas damage. So on a pool, I am playing Death's Reach, I grip in one of the adds, and I pretty much just pop all of my cooldowns. Now, if you plan on using Abomination's Limb in the intermission on Kel'Thas' sh second shield, then you want to pretty much use Abomination's Limb either on pull or not use it at all at the beginning of the fight, otherwise it just won't be up at that point. In this video, I'm not going to use it in the intermission, and I'm going to save it until phase 2, but um, that's something that you kind of have to decide. Um, as you can see here, I did also save my army, uh, which I will be using on Kel'Thas. So with these pedestals, when you click them, at this point we have so much gear and so much healing that you can just click it and go to 6 ticks. Um, if you want to save some damage taken, you can AMS before you click it, and that's going to uh, allow you to take a little bit less damage. So as you saw, we stop damage in this first phase. If you want to do a lot of damage in the first phase, you essentially have to ask people not to DPS. Um, otherwise, everything just dies instantly. So then when kill Thos comes down, um, you want to... Focus purely on single target damage. Don't do any damage to the phoenixes. Um, and in this phase, you, they sh shouldn't need you to uh, spam chains on the phoenixes either. This is where single target DPS matters a lot. And using chains of ice on the phoenixes is a huge DPS loss. So in this phase, rely more on druids, hunters, etc. to kind of control those rather than your chains. So whenever the boss came down, I popped all my cooldowns. And that will allow my Unholy Blight and my Dark Transformation to be up for the second shield. So for the first shield, you don't really have much. Your army is rolling, so you contribute a little bit. But other than that, you don't have much. For the second shield, however, you have Unholy Blight and Dark Transformation, which is like okay damage. Compared to some other classes, it's pretty low, but it does contribute a little bit. And as you can see, I might have my Apocalypse up here as well. Yeah. Um... So as you saw, there was a 5 second delay where my A-Bomb Limb isn't up. It just came up right now. So if you're planning on using A-Bomb Limb as a cooldown in that intermission, you have to not pop it on pull or right on pull depending on your push timing. Um, then we just push the boss and we go to phase 2. So moving into phase 2, Depending on your raid comp, you might need to focus on the phoenixes. Um, on our first few kills, I was on Chains of Ice duty. I had one of the phoenixes set to focus, and the other one I just mouse overed, and I kept Chains of Ice on them 100% of the time. They were never not slowed. Um, and that's going to make a big difference to you actually being able to deal with the second phase um, efficiently, instead of just having phoenixes be all over your raid and people constantly having to run away from them. However, in this raid, we do have enough like druids and stuff to control them without me having to contribute too much. Then, when the first wave of occultists spawn here, uh, this is really where you can pop your cooldowns to get a bunch of extra damage. My A-Bomb Limb was a little bit unlucky there. Uh, it actually gripped one of the phoenixes, even though there were a bunch of other targets that were viable nearby. 
Um, normally, you don't want to use a bomb limb if there are phoenixes nearby. It's a super annoying thing to do. You either need to ask your monks to place a ring of peace, and then you need to position yourself in a way where the phoenixes would get gripped into the ring and get knocked back, so they're not actually gripped into the raid. Um, or you need to be further than 20 yards away from the phoenixes, uh, which depending on where they are and where your raid is positioned, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to do. Um, then moving into this last set of adds, we actually do Bloodlust and I use my um, Unholy Bite and Dark Transformation here, if I remember correctly. But depending on your raid strategy, you might not even get these infusers, so you might have Bloodlust um, in the second KL phase. Uh, with our strategy, we do have to deal with these infusers, so that means that using Chains of Ice on them, if you have to, um, or in this case, our warrior said, don't worry about chaining them because I have the slows. So I didn't have to actually spend globals on slowing. Um, the phoenixes here, as you can see, I tossed out a few chains just to keep them slowed as they were getting close to the raid. But if you're progging this and it's your first kill, absolutely focus on keeping chains on the phoenixes. You're not going to look good on the meters, but believe me, the moment you stop doing that, your raid will notice that there's something up with the phoenixes because they're all over everyone. So then when kill comes down here, all your cooldowns should be back up. Your uh, third use of a bomb limb should be up. And this is really where you want a monk to have ring of peace, because if they don't, you essentially cannot use your a bomb limb. Um, at this point, I asked our monks if they were running Ring of Peace. Both of them said no. So I end up not even using my A-bomb limb here um, on the kill um, until much later, where I think only one of the phoenixes was in range. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, the way our cooldowns work, up, work out in this last phase, you can use them on the first shield, and then for the second shield, you just kind of, you know, you have Soul Reaper, and that's about it. So... Other than that, um, utility-wise, we do have AMZ, which is great for the kill phases. Um, whenever your raid you know, needs to soak damage, split damage, uh, you can use it there. Besides that, IBF, AMS, pretty decent here. Um, you can AMS a lot of the fire damage that happens in the intermission phases with kill. But our main purpose on this fight is just using those AoE cooldowns to wipe out waves. Um, specifically the assassin waves um, and using chains of ice to really control those phoenixes. Now in the intermissions you can also use death grip especially if you have two dk's you can death grip the phoenixes to a better starting spot because they always spawn around the same area but you can grip them into the corner of the room so they end up being less of, a, of an issue but overall just being on add control duty is mainly what unholy dk is about. Our damage in the first KL phase is okay. Um, in the second KL phase is really where we contribute a little bit more, um, just because we do have Soul Reaper for that entire phase. Yeah, let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions about this fight in particular, um, anything about maximizing damage, or um, any tips on cooldown usage. Um, this fight in particular has a bunch of different strategies that people end up using. So cooldown timings might vary from pool to pool and from guild to guild. So that's why I didn't go into too many specific details there. But yeah, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.